Hey guys, um, I'm not even sure how to start this video, honestly. I have tried to film this two other times. I feel like when I've tried to film this, I was just so focused on it being perfect and everything coming off exactly how I wanted it to be and oh I forgot this or I didn't mention this when I should have talked more about it and it's just hindered me from actually getting it posted and so today I'm not going to try to focus on being perfect and everything coming out the right way I'm just going to try to focus on being open and honest and vulnerable um, which is very scary for me because I have never been the type of person to be super open about everything. I've always been very like keep to myself. Um, it's always been very difficult for me to share my past, my struggles, um, because I have a fear of people seeing me differently people turning away from me, people judging me, shaming me, whatever it may be. And so that has been a huge factor into me not wanting to share my story because I'm afraid. So for the past, you know, few months, I feel like Jesus has really laid on my heart that it's time to share what he's done for me. And I have wrestled with it. I have fought back from it because of the fear, but I'm gonna try really hard today to get through it. Sorry, I haven't even started yet and I'm already crying. <laughs> this is, um, this video is gonna be a mess probably, but something that one of my friends told me a while back that has actually really stuck with me and encouraged me to do this is that she said, your testimony isn't about you. It's about everything that God has done for you. I guess I'll start with me growing up. I was raised in church. I went to church since, for my whole entire life, since I was born, I have gone to church. But I never really had a relationship with Jesus at all. I would go to church, I would raise my hands during worship, sit through the sermons, go to church camps, everything, look the part, but I never truly knew what salvation really felt like. I asked Jesus into my heart at the age of like six or something like that, but after that, it was that's pretty much it. I just... Um, I would pray when I went to the altar, but in general, I just didn't really have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know him. I didn't know what that would look like to truly be saved and have a relationship with him. And so I went through my life just feeling kind of numb throughout church. And I'll kind of talk about why I struggled with that. Um, so... This is so hard. I'll just start with the fact that growing up, I was never taught about sex. Um, and I know some people, this is going to be touchy subject, people don't like to talk about this, but I am going to be discussing this in this video, so if you don't want to hear it, you can click off. But. I was never taught anything about sex at all. Not from church, from school, nothing. All I knew and all that I was told growing up was that you don't have sex until you're married. That's all I knew. And so I didn't really understand it from a biblical standpoint. Why don't we? And so I didn't have any type of real grasp of what the true meaning behind that was really were God's intentions for it. So starting at the age of 12, um, I was shown pornography from a friend from school. Sorry.
And so that was the start of a huge addiction for me, starting at a very young age. And it was never something that I was talked to about. I never really heard any type of like preaching on it. I heard, I would hear a few sermons ever so often where they would mention pornography, but it was usually focused towards guys and it would be a brief thing. I never heard like a whole sermon or a whole teaching or anything like that about it. Um, they would just kind of be like, you know, boys, I know you struggle with pornography when you're alone or something. And that was kind of it. And so I was left feeling completely alone and isolated that I was the only one that struggled with it, that I was disgusting, I was messed up, and I was the only person, especially like the only type, like only girl that would struggle with this type of problem. And so this led to years of addiction for me and struggles. So that would lead to talking to boys online. And I was, I was very young during this, obviously, starting at 12. So talking to guys, and then that even led into high school. Um, I had no worth for myself. I didn't see myself as valuable or loved or I had no self-love for myself. And so I would try to get some type of affection or approval or like have a guy say like appreciate me almost to get um, attention and affection and so I would try to fi fill the emptiness of my heart with you know pornography talking to guys whatever it might have been for years because I had no relationship with Jesus that emptiness in my heart was a void because I didn't know Jesus. And so I tried to fill that with living in sin and trying to get love from random guys. And that is so hard for me to admit because I'm, I have went through so much shame from the things that I have done. But that is not who I am anymore. I am a whole new person now. And I will not let shame and guilt from my past tear me down and keep me from speaking my truth so something that really didn't help was that it is so normalized in modern society pornography is normalized sexting and you know sending nudes is normalized yes like the, like in high school everyone's just like everybody does it it's normal that's what you do when you're a teenager and it's so downplayed and normalized that people don't realize the massive consequences and tolls that it takes on you and the years of pain and struggle as it brings. Something that has helped me is hearing people openly talk about that having that struggle, how they overcame it because so many people struggle with it, way more than I think we realize. I've heard pastors speak on it, Pastor Mike Todd. I really enjoy his preaching and he has openly talked about his struggles with it. And that is very encouraging to me. Something else that played a role into my struggles was when I was 14, I had a I had a childhood best friend passed away and then like five months later my papa had passed away 
And so I went into a deep depression then. Feeling again empty and numb. I had such a huge void in my heart. And so the depression would lead to anxiety. Anxiety would lead to even me being so low as to have suicidal thoughts. Because I didn't feel like I had any purpose in my life. I felt like I didn't have any value or meaning or purpose. I didn't know how valuable I was because I didn't go to Jesus. I didn't go to God. I didn't study about what God truly says about us and how precious we are to him. In God's eyes, we are so valuable. A book that I read that was so helpful to me to, to truly know my worth um, is called Jesus, Sex, and the Conversation, The Church Forgot, and it's written by Mo Isom, and she talks a ton about our value in Christ and our purpose and our worth and how truly valuable we are to him, and I think once we realize that, that once I realized how valuable I truly was, not just to myself, but to God, then it truly showed me that doing the things I was doing was such a disrespect and it was just such a waste. And I was not honoring God with my body which he had given me and that has so much value I just felt like at this point when I was like 14 15 I was just stuck in this endless cycle of like addiction depression trying to get the victory over it so I would go to a sermon hear someone talk about getting the victory over whatever chains that have you bound and I would like go to the altar, do a little prayer, try to get victory over it, and then it would just go back to the endless cycle. Live in sin, feel guilty about it, try to get, you know, victory over it, and it's just like an endless cycle for me. Like I was just constantly chained and had this constant burden that I could not get over for years. And it was like church camp after church camp, camp meeting after camp meeting, service after service, just feeling empty and alone. And I just felt like I just didn't have a connection to God and I didn't know why. I just felt like the outcast and I would be so bored in church. I would sit there. I didn't want to go to church because I just felt numb. This continued on and starting at the age of 16, I got into my first real relationship <sighs> and I don't know how much detail I want to go into here because this is a very personal like touchy subject for me but I'll just say that because I had no real understanding of what sex meant, no value for myself, um, I had no boundaries. And there is a series called Relationship Goals by Pastor Mike Todd that I highly recommend. Even if, whether you're single or married or whatever, I highly recommend watching that series. It was so helpful to me. And something he says is in that is that if you don't have parameters for your relationship, your relationship will create the parameters. And starting off in that relationship, I, my parameters, parameters were just, we're not having sex until we're married. I had no reasoning behind that. That's just what I had been told. Um, I was a virgin. I don't want to have sex. 
that's about it. So starting off, you know, I didn't have any real meaning behind those. They were just rules to me. And so over time, it's like, it, I was pushed a little bit more, pushed a little bit more, pushed a little bit more until there was no boundaries anymore. That relationship was extremely toxic. It was, I was emotionally abused in that relationship for about a year and a half. I felt trapped because once you give up everything, you feel like you have to stay with that person because you feel like you've given up the most valuable thing that you have, so you have to marry them. That's what kept me in such a toxic and emotionally abusive environment for so long was because I felt like I had to stay with him because I had nothing else to offer. So that relationship was just a huge downfall for me. So, yeah. It was so painful for me and I still have struggles from that relationship. And it has almost been two years since we broke up and I still struggle. Let me just encourage you guys that whether you're a guy or a girl, it doesn't matter. Please know your worth and do not settle. Because when I, because I didn't know my worth, I let someone treat me awful. I let them talk down to me. I let them degrade me and push me down to one of the to like the lowest point I've ever been. I became extremely depressed. I became suicidal again because of that relationship. Please don't settle because that will have huge consequences that you will have to deal with for years. You have no idea. And so, I wish I could just save everyone from the heartbreak because I wish I would have seen the signs and left before it even started because a relationship like that leaves scars that are just a reminder of all the pain you went through and it's very hard to forget. But I do want to encourage you guys that if you have been through a situation like that or whatever it may be, something that has really helped me is I have prayed that God will help me forget everything about that relationship, all of it. And it truly has helped me a lot. God has helped me through it. And I have grown a so much from that point. So something that I have heard that I wish I would have heard back when I was in that relationship is that because Jesus lives inside of us I have always heard that my whole life Jesus lives in us and I've always thought of it as such a surface thing but there is a place in our heart that Jesus literally lives inside so every day whatever we're doing Jesus is there with us and something that I had heard in a sermon was what are you making Jesus live through? If I would have heard that back then, me living in sin, I was making Jesus live through that, making him be there with me through all of that. 
feel like that would, I don't know if it would have been a wake up call, but I definitely think it would have convicted me enough to try to change. I don't really want to go into a ton of detail, like I said before, but after that relationship, I was at such a low point that I still had no value for myself and I was still trying to search and fill my voids. That's all I really want to say about that. Um, something that I had heard from another YouTuber that I really um, admire, her name is Cayenne. She had an amazing testimony video. And something she said in one of her other videos was that if sex was created for marriage, then we have never experienced sex. We've only experienced sin. And I loved that. And I thought that was such a good point. That really has encouraged me. I just want to encourage you guys that even if it feels like you are the worst of the worst and that you have messed up so many times in your life that you are not pure anymore. That's how I felt like I felt so ashamed that I had lost my purity. You can turn your life around and God can restore your purity. And I know that people like joke at people for saying they're a born again virgin or whatever and it's kind of like a joke but that is seriously how I feel is that God has just restored my purity and making the decision that like from now on I am not going to give myself away and I'm going to wait until I am married is very powerful. Even if you haven't done that your whole life and you have messed up or you have whatever, making that commitment now, God is going to love you for that. We've all made mistakes. We've all messed up, but that doesn't mean that there's no redemption for you and that you have to continue to live in that bondage. So, what has been a big turning point for me just in this past year? I'm not going to act like all of these things that happened were so long ago. I am 19 now and there are things that I struggled with just in this past year. But with that said, I can also say that God has brought me so far in this past year. I've never experienced this freedom and love in my whole life through a relationship with Jesus. Something else that helped me was educating myself by reading books like I said and listening to podcasts, watching videos. Some I'll leave some recommendations down below for some things that have helped me. Um, and I just want to share a few scriptures before I end this that I have written down um, that have helped me through this so maybe hopefully I can encourage someone um, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ for this the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Jesus Christ from the law of sin and death Romans 8 1 through 2 and then 2nd Corinthians 5 17 says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. And then um, one of my favorite verses that has really helped me through this like transformation really felt like God took away my heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh. And that is in Ezekiel 36, 26. And then something else that has really helped me is that when you go through addiction to whatever it may be, um, I can only speak from my experience through my addiction with pornography, my mind was filled with dark things. And that was one of my biggest battles through the years was my mind and not being able to move past that. And I just felt like I was constantly like being tortured with my own thoughts. 
And so again, I want to encourage you guys, something I've done there too, is to pray for God to help me forget and to help me have a renewing of my mind. And that, it talks about the renewal of your mind in Romans 12 and 2. I feel like the crucifixion and hearing about Jesus dying is so normalized now. For me at least, I've heard it and it was always on the surface. I never truly understood and took time to understand it. But Jesus chose to come to earth and to endure all the pain and torture and everything and dying so that we could be free from our sins. Is me feeling like I couldn't share my testimony not acknowledging the fact that Jesus died for my sins? There is no condemnation for my sins. I am a new creature. God has forgiven me. He has wiped my slate clean. And so, I'm not ashamed anymore. I will take accountability for my actions. I was not somebody that I am proud of. I have made a lot of mistakes. I have done things that are wrong. But that is not who I am anymore. The purpose for our lives should be to show Jesus' love. I'm being honest here because I want to show you guys how God transformed me and brought me through all of this pain and trials. A quote that I really love is, Your life is a uniquely written and orchestrated song presenting the gospel for the glory of the Lord. That was a lot. Just want to encourage y'all. I am here if anyone ever wants to talk. This has been very hard for me, so I hope you will have some grace for me. But even if this just encourages one person who may be going through some trials, then it is worth it for me to be honest and to move forward from here. So. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.